The 2017 release Space Explorers from designer Yuri Zhravlev initially slipped past me. It's since been touted as a Splendor killer and has certainly now been brought to my attention. I'm a massive fan of Splendor, so I was very keen to get this to the table to see how it played. Let's take a look. Setup of the game is simple. Each player receives a research and development hub where you place your cards later. You get five resources, one of each type, and a player reference sheet, which is very useful for your first few games to understand what the icons mean on each of the cards, the main principles of the game and other abilities that the cards give you once you have them. You then deal six cards face up in the center, one blind to each player, and leave the rest shuffled in the middle. You then take these projectiles equal to the number of players plus two. So in this two player game, you will have four in total. The point of these is once you've achieved the goal, similar to Splendor, so in this case, three green, two yellow, two blue, this will then come visit you as a free action. You've achieved this mission and you've got four points at the end of the game. The first player token is assigned randomly. This stays constant throughout the game. It doesn't change alternate rounds. On your turn, you then have the choice of two things, either take a card or play a card. If you take a card, you can take face up or blind. When you play a card, you need to have the resources required to spend for that card. So in this case, four blue. I don't have four blue, I only have one, one of each, so I don't have the ability to play that. What I could do is discard this. Discarding a card gets you two free resources and then play from here, but I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna take the blind from here. My opponent will then have a go and then it's back to me. On my second go, I now have two cards, which gives me more options. So this card I've picked up is quite expensive and I've only picked it up to discard it anyway. So I'll discard this into the central reservation. You can have more than six. You can never have less, but you can have more. So that's now gone. And ultimately what that's done is it's given me the chance to play this card because by discarding, I've now gained two free resources. It's always the first two from the bottom up as indicated by this arrow. So essentially this blue and this blue are now spent. I only need one more blue to spend to get this card in my array. This can go into either blue or red. That's another reason why I wanted this card. For this case, I'll put it into red. So that's now done just from simply spending this and discarding the card. One major difference here now is what happens to this resource. Unlike Splendor and other games where it goes into the central bank, this will actually be given to my opponent. So they now on their next turn have an extra resource to spend on their turn. They themselves, when they spend resources, give them to me. So the game progresses like that nicely with the resources moving backwards and forwards between the players. The game ends once either a player has 12 cards in their array or all four of these missions has been achieved. The cool thing about the game is what you get from the card. So this card going here, the next time I place any card into red, the first two resources, because of these two icons here, means that the first two resources from the bottom up, remember, are spent and I don't need to do them. However, there are other cards that give you more power. So for example, this card here, once this has been played into blue, equally the first resource of any type when played in blue is paid for, but equally any card played into any one of the five areas, if they require a red or a yellow, that's paid for as well. So these cards have two powers, either for a specific resource played into any area or for any resource when played into the area that this card currently exists. So another nice difference there from, from Splendor, which makes the, the mechanics of the game very interesting. There are lots of different powers of the cards that are all explained in the cards here and on the back of the rule. So very simply to pick up and, and understand, but really does add some depth quite different to other games of the silk, such as Splendor. Okay, so I absolutely love this game. I've played quite a few times in solo mode and also in two and three player. I've not tried a four player yet, I'd love to give that a try, but it's absolutely wonderful. A seamless experience enjoyed by everyone who I've got it to the table with so far. Is this a Splendor killer? Absolutely not. It's a wonderful game, but I'm gonna keep Splendor in my collection as well. I like both. The mechanics obviously are very similar. Space Explorers probably has a few more little intricacies in the base game, although of course Splendor has some expansions that can add some complexity if you like. However, the theme of the two is so different, it feels a different enough of an experience for me to justify both staying in my collection. The artwork for this really is wonderful. The cards are absolutely gorgeous. I love the way that they look. I love the way that they feel. I love how simple the icons make the rules as you play the game. It's a wonderful game. Definitely staying in my collection. Really pleased I got it. And for a couple of quid over 20 pounds, I heartily encourage you to try it out. It's available right now on Zatu. Give it a try. Space Explorers, wonderful game.